This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. Week three in the NFL is kind of a bummer in that it involved a lot of injuries, and ideally you get to wash your mouth out with a good Monday Night Football game, but tonight we get the... Cowboys and the Giants, not exactly the most scintillating matchup, but hey, there is still money to be won. There are actually some props I like for tonight. So let's dive on in and get you set for Monday Night Football from a betting perspective between the Cowboys and the Giants. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire.com, joined here as I am each Monday by Ryan Williams. Check him out on Twitter at Ryan Alexander underscore W. Ryan, you were at the Bears game yesterday. You talked about the Bears' money line here on Covering the Spread last week. They made you sweat a bit, though, but you got the win. How are you doing today? Yeah, win's a win, Jim. We're doing, we're doing all right. Uh, it was a very solemn exit for the fans there at Soldier Field. Um, you know, lot, lots of things to work out, but definitely loved the way the defense played. Mm-hmm. Um, the defense is actually, you know, outside of the Green Bay game, which you're traveling to Lambeau, you know what you're going to get right. um, with these two teams. But the defense has looked really good to start the year. Um, absolutely love the rookie Jaquan Brisker, who's mm-hmm. been everywhere on every play. Um, looks like a great pick for uh for the new regime so you know we're just taking it one game at a time it'll be interesting because we're actually playing in new york next week so we'll get to uh, do some scouting against the giants tonight as they take on the dallas cowboys Love it. Advanced scouting. Love to hear it. I think that'll be uh, a good angle for tonight to, to get in on that. And also, like, I think Jaquan Brisker stuff is is nice confirmation that paying attention to things during preseason, like training camp, like what beat reporters say, can actually have some value at times. Um, not just in terms of, like, um, you can get a lot of signals for player props from that, too, but also just kind of a sense of, okay, like, this guy might actually be okay. Maybe this unit will outperform expectations stuff like that like it's too soon to say like the bears defense will be better than expectations but like that stuff seems legit on him so Great. paying attention during camp is always been pretty valuable we're going to break down this giants versus cowboys game from a prop betting perspective and much more in just one second but first a reminder to make sure you are subscribed to covering the spread wherever you get your podcast we are here every weekday monday through friday talking player props talking regular betting college football coming up on wednesday as well all that right here on the covering the spread podcast feed. get that wherever you get your podcasts and up on the fanduel youtube page as well twisted t and fanduel have joined forces to bring you a -a one-of-a-kind contest series it gives you a chance to compete for your share of thousands of dollars in site credit introducing twisted Twisted T's College Football Picks, a sports betting focused contest series that's entirely free to play. The contest is simple. Each college football game will be assigned money line, spread, and total markets with assigned points to each market. All you have to do is make six selections based on those three markets and earn points for each correct selection you made. If at the end of the day your score ranks among the best in the contest, you'll be eligible for your share of site credit. Head to FanDuel.com slash Twisted T Picks and make your picks. Reminder, please drink responsibly. Again, the URL there, FanDuel.com slash Twisted T Picks. Let's dig into this Monday Night Football game here with the uh, G- Cowboys at the Giants right now. The Giants, one-point favorites, total 39 and a half. We're talking about those two markets, though, Ryan. I want to talk to you about this game overall because it's tough for me to get a read on either team right now. I have very low expectations of the Cowboys without Dak Prescott. But they did play well last week, getting Michael Gallup back for tonight, I think. Uh, That should be a good boon as well. But also, it's still hard to get jazzed about a Cooper Rush-led team. On the opposing side of the Giants 2-0, but a lot of injuries heading into this game. So what's your overall read on Cowboys versus Giants? Yeah, we're going to have to look at the under here, Jim, at 39 and a half. These primetime games, uh, I believe, if my numbers are correct, uh, six and three in primetime to start the season here uh, towards the under. And and the under has been something that's been talked about um, in the betting community, you know, to start off this season. And we saw it come to fruition again in week three with a massive amount of unders hitting and what we expected on paper to be, you know, explosive matchups. And so you're looking at this team with with Cooper Rush and you're looking at Daniel uh, First of all, the Dallas Cowboys against this New York Giants team, nine and nine out of the last 10 have been wins. And the only loss has been a game that Dak Prescott didn't play in. Now, was that, that the was Ben Andy DiNucci Dalton. game? Uh, I think that was the Andy Dalton game. Oh, OK. Dang. Yeah, That's a couple not of years back. Uh, but, the uh, Ben DiNucci uh, game will live on in infamy. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, but regardless, you know, you like what Cooper Rush was showing you last week as far as, you know, just 
trying to be efficient with the football, not turn it over, getting Zeke and Pollard involved. So I think we'll talk about, you know, some key ways on, on both of these teams to to win. But right now, you know, with the movement here, this was a line that opened up at four in the Dallas Cowboys favor um, when things were, you know, we're thinking when we were thinking that Dak, Pre- Dak Prescott was going to be at the helm. Now it's Giants minus one. It's pretty much a pick them here. Um, this is going to be an ugly game. I don't know if I have a lean on who can pull this out because the Giants have eked two victories out, uh, I feel like, to start the year. But the under is really screaming at me at under 39 and a half. Yeah, I think that uh, for me, this is a tough one to get it super jazzed about the traditional markets here. I did bet the Giants money line earlier on this week. I regret that now because I didn't think Leonard Williams was going to sit. And the fact that he's not playing bothers me a lot. So I got that at minus 110. It's still there right now. So it's not going to like go down as like a movement against me kind of bet. And it wasn't like an official like thing we talked about here in the show. But like I did take that and. I kind of wish I hadn't just because of specifically Leonard Williams saying, I assume that they wouldn't have Wandale or Kadarius Tony like that. That was baked in. But the Leonard Williams stuff does bother me because he's he's an impact kind of guy, especially against a banged up Cowboys offensive line. So I've got this as the Giants by one point three one points. No value there. No value in the money line right now after accounting for the Williams injury. So to me, the traditional markets are kind of a stay away, but we got a lot of props to discuss. Let's start things off here by talking about this Cowboys passing game. Michael Gallup expected to be back here, likely on a pitch count. We saw it last week, Cooper Rush funneling work towards Noah Brown and CeeDee Lamb. And, you know, that's kind of all you can ask of the guy. Like, if you're going to be a backup quarterback, at least put the ball in your playmaker's hands. I realize I'm saying that about Noah Brown right now, but like, whatever. I mean, it's probably better than what else the Cowboys have out there at this point. So they get Michael Gallup back. Are you looking to fade this Cowboys passing game as a result of Gallup's return, adding another mouth to feed in there? Or what's your view of this one, buying a Cooper Rush? Uh, what do you think about the Cowboys passing game here? Yeah, I'm not really sold on anybody in the passing game. I think Noah Brown, and, and I, I apologize because I don't have the prop in front of me. I think I closed the tab, Jim. But uh, the <laughs> Noah Brown, Noah 37, Brown thing, uh, 37 and a half right now. 37 and a half. So I'd be interested in that because, yes, like you said, Dallas being on a pitch count, we know that Dalton Schultz is banged up as well. And, I mean, the Giants – for all intents and purposes, like the, the one thing that they have to try and do is contain CD lamb here. Mm-hmm. Um, who's been the alpha in this offense, seeing about a 37% target share there, but Noah Brown, you know, compared to last week, he, he had his target share um, it, jump up there. And we always see this with the backup quarterback. They have their favorite target that they've been working with in the off season, preseason training camp, things of that nature. This might be Noah Brown for, for Cooper rush. So um, I, I do like getting uh, over that number. Um, compared to what C.D. Lamb was, which the last time I checked was it like 75 and a half or 77 and a half, somewhere around there. Yeah, um, I think that for me, I'm just going to stay away from this one. The passing game is just, it's muddy. I know the Gallops, I, I respect Gallops talent a lot. His prop is 26 and a half. That also seems a bit high uh, for him right now. So staying away there. And part of the reason why I can resist the passing game and not feel any FOMO is because I actually think that there's a lot of value in the rushing props here. So let's take a look at the backfields here. They're always pretty interesting. We see a lot of talk about Tony Pollard always never really gets a ton of use, but did pop off last week. Um, Any running back centric market standing out to you right now at FanDuel Sportsbook? Yeah, let's look at Tony Pollard here, Jim, because Tony Pollard, you know, with his numbers coming in uh, over 37 and a half, I believe, for the rushing yards. He's 18 and a half for the receiving yards. Of course, we don't have FanDuel uh, listing him for his rushing and receiving prop yet because that was the first thing I looked for. Mm -hmm. Because the guy's involved. I mean, Zeke is only seeing around, you know, 57 percent, 55 percent of the running back touches. And Pollard has been involved uh, early and often in these matchups. Now I will say that this is a long shot and I don't want to, you know, I, I like it and I'm just interested in it. I'm going to take a shot on it. I believe Tony Pollard is like 240 or 250 to score a first half touchdown. Mm-hmm. Um, I do like his anytime touchdown prop as well, but I think the first half touchdown is interesting because of how, how Dallas has chose to attack this team in the past. Zeke has had great numbers over, over the past couple of years against this team. Like regardless, I believe he has five, touchdowns in the past six games we've seen some 100 yard games from him but if he is hitting that plateau early and if they are able to somewhat contain him you talked about Leonard Williams being out like Tony Pollard could be that guy to just establish things early for this team so I think it's an interesting bet um, to get on him early get the Dallas Cowboys out to an early lead if uh, you have any leans on that 
Yeah, so I think that that's interesting because like you're talking about Pollard's usage. I'm talking about it also in a, in a in a different way because I like the under on Zeke's rushing plus receiving mark. It is 72 and a half. Yeah, that's <laughs> how did it get that that's high? Incredible. Um, I know again, I respect Leonard Williams. I am I think it's impactful that he is out from the, out for this game, but that is a really big number. Part of it, I mean, like the first two games this year. Zeke mm-hmm. has had uh, 49 rushing plus receiving yards in both those games. Part of that's because he lost yardage on two receptions. So, like, in theory, he should have had more. But going up against the Giants, I don't necessarily think this is a situation where you expect him to go bananas. Like, you'd have to, I'd need them to be, like, six-point favorites to feel really good about this number. Looking back at, I mean, last year before Zeke got hurt, before he had that knee injury, he was in the over on this number pretty consistently. Uh, his knee injury occurred, I believe, in like week six or so. He had his rushing totals before then were 110, 143, 95, 71, but he went over with the, the receiving there. Um, so like he was he was playing really well. What we've seen so far this year, though, is they're not really leaning on him all that much. Um, he's averaged 12 and a half carries per game. He's had two targets per game and not a lot of juice within those targets. So I feel like under 72 and a half is the way to go on the rushing plus receiving mark for Zeke. And I'm taking the receiving into account here because I just, he hasn't been super involved in the passing game thus far. Snap rate did increase last week because Jerry Jones has said that they do want to lean more on Zeke uh, with Dak Prescott being out, but now Connor McGovern not going to play in this game. That at least helps partly nullify the Leonard Williams injury. So I think that the Zeke under here is super attractive. 72 and a half. What's your read on that one? Yeah, I, I I do like it. I I am interested in, in Zeke. You know, just as the anytime scorer there, I believe yeah. he's at around uh, one hundred and fifty, um, which which seems reasonable. Yeah. Um, I, you know, you're just hoping that he can still maintain some goal line work. I think the big thing for Zeke is. Are we going to see him involved in this passing game? Because he has gotten right. some targets in these matchups in the past couple of times. Now, again, we're, we're talking about a Dak Prescott led offense, which is totally different than a Cooper Rush led offense. But I, I do think Dallas tries to establish the run for whatever that's worth. Zeke's prop, I believe, is at 57 and a half for rushing. Mm-hmm. And I'd feel a lot more comfortable taking that, just knowing that Tony Pollard's back there and is the better receiving back for whatever that's worth. So, um, you know, it, it's one of those things where like you kind of need, like you not only need this game to be close, you need Dallas to kind of, you know, be establishing the run with with a lead, so to speak, and then not yeah. too big of a lead, because if they do come in here, have a big lead, we could just expect Pollard to just be the one to ride it out. Like so um, it, it does make me worrisome to even look at look at his props. But I think he's, you know, in a favorable enough matchup to where. Um, I would take his rushing and probably his scoring too as they get in the red zone. Now I am looking at the under, so you know, trying to not to have trying not to have too many anytime touchdown props yeah, yeah. Um, to go along with it. But I will say, Jim, that in going back to Tony Pollard, his first half touchdown prop is plus five hundred. Um, I was looking at Saquon there at the two forty, misread the numbers. So plus five hundred, five to one. I think I have to take a chance on that because they could do some some interesting things with uh, Kellen Moore and Co as they get down in the red zone. And they did get involved in the first half last week. Um, yeah. So, like, I think that that is. First, yeah, he had the first touchdown of the game. Yeah, it was for, like a really Dallas. sick reception. And he had, like, a long touchdown. I think it was a reception. But, like, it was a long yeah. touchdown. And he he looked really good there. So, his snap rate was down. But I still think that this is a, a good spot for Pollard. So, I'd agree. That's a pretty fun one. Did want to talk about Saquon quickly? Because yeah. when I first saw his rushing plus receiving number at 107.5, I was like, oh, man, under. And then I dug into it. and I was like, oh, no, don't do that. Um, so I have not taken it. I'm glad I didn't. That would have been similar to the Giants money line where it have been like, oh, I regret that. Uh, but looking at the, the first two games, Saquon, 18, 18 and 21 carries. But more importantly for this number, he's had seven and four targets. That is how you get to an over of a high number very quickly. Now, I'm not taking the over. I want to make that very clear. But I talked myself out of what seemed to be an automatic under earlier on. So for me, I think the Saquon props are probably going to wind up being stay aways for me, but I'm, I'm glad that I dug into it more before betting that because one of 7.5 seems really high. Any read for you on any Saquon props here? Yeah. So I actually like the Dallas defense t- tonight, Jim. I think that they, you know, 
do do a lot of things well um, that the Giants will not be able to contain. First of all, with the pass rush, yes, um, they're getting high pressure rates, um, and this that, this Giants offensive line has not been able to to do Daniel Jones any favors there. Um, so maybe we try and see him rush out of the pocket. We have seen some big rushing totals from uh, Daniel Jones on prime time games. Um, now to say all that, I mean it's it's just like kind of what we talked about with Austin Eckler a couple of weeks ago. I mean this guy has the chance to kind of hit that number any time that he's on the field. And especially when you're talking about the injuries to the wide receiver group, like what's to say that if they're getting pressure very quickly, there's not just dump offs coming to Saquon Barkley when he can actually, you know, really, you know, obliterate this line they have in the past. I will say that this Dallas defense has done a good job in order to contain Saquon Barkley over the past couple of years, he has been banged up, but I do, I do want to look at his receiving prop. If I'm going to look at anything, just because that number is so high at one Oh seven and a half, I'm yeah. just thinking of ways that he can, you know, maybe get to that number, but I, if he misses it, you know, on the rushing yards, because he's only rushing for, you know, let's say 30 or 40, but right. he's able to get, you know, a big 40 yard catch, and, right. you know, get quick dump offs. I think he can hit that uh, receiving prop very easily in this matchup. Another reason you could hit that receiving prop is because their pass catchers are banged up. And I want to keep that right. as our transition into the other Monday night football props to consider. Cause I got a tough couple of anytime touchdown props that I want to run by you. Both yeah. these are related to the Kadarius Tony and Wandale Robinson injuries because last week with those guys either out or limited, Sterling Shepard had 10 targets. <laughs> Sterling Shepard is plus 290 for an anytime yeah. touchdown. I find that intriguing. Also intriguing looking back at last week. So the Giants have Daniel Bellinger, rookie tight end, who has been starting with the first team and, and, you know, working quite a bit. However, last week, some guy named Tanner Hudson uh, ran more routes than Daniel Bellinger, 17 routes to Bellinger's 13. If you have ever played preseason DFS, I think you may have. I can't recall. You probably know Tanner Hudson's name. Tanner Hudson can catch. He can. Yeah, he can play, man. (laughs) He can play. Uh, And he comes over to the Giants. Suddenly, 17 routes last week. He got three targets, got 22 yards. His anytime touchdown prop is 11 to 1. I'm not opposed, Ryan. Not opposed. So to me, I think those are my favorite two anytime touchdown props. I I actually took Hudson at plus 950 because I'm in Rhode Island and I'd have to pop over to Massachusetts to get 11 to 1. I think plus 950 is actually fine too. So I like Tanner Hudson quite a bit at 11 to one. And I like Shep at 290. Any read for you on the anytime touchdown prop markets outside of the one we discussed with Pollard? Yeah, this, that's an interesting one with Tanner Hudson. Of course, you know, I had to go down and scroll. You know, what what is he to be a first touchdown scorer, Jim? If we're, you know, if we're getting really dicey with it. You know, let's sprinkle just a, just a couple bucks on him at 37 to 1 uh, to be the first touchdown scorer. We talk about it all the time with the quarterbacks and tight ends, like just getting just getting interesting, um, you know, prop bets on them because it, they tend to be the ones to kind of score out. And, and they're always the ones that people are surprised by. Oh, man. How did, you know, I didn't see this touchdown going to that helps nobody. And it's like, it helps me. (laughs) Yeah. Everybody has Daniel Bellinger, but uh, no, I even 11 to one anytime touchdown, I I think is great just because so much of the, so much of the flock will be going to Daniel Bellinger with him just having already caught a touchdown um, in last week's game. I absolutely love this, the Sterling Shepard call. Um, It was at 270. So it's being, you know, it's already pushed down to the 290 range. Um, That's incredible when you're looking at him second in the team and red zone targets. Um, So he's definitely involved. And I mean, he's, he's the guy, he's the only guy that's playing a 90%, uh, you know, 90% route participant route participation wow yeah it's early jim uh but you know you know what i'm (laughs) trying to get to uh he uh when you're looking at the other guys on this on this offense i mean they're just they're you know even sills i mean can we can we trust him um uh, who's the other receiver that I'm trying to think of, but he, you know, these guys are just not as involved as Sterling yeah. Shepard is. So I do like that anytime touchdown prop on him. Um, and then outside of that, I mean, it really gets, it, it, it really gets pretty dicey. Like I said, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to look at, I'm going to look at Zeke at plus 150. I mean, Tony Pollard at plus 250 anytime. I'm just going to ride with that, especially if I'm riding with the first half uh, prop as well. Um, and, and just hope for, you know, not a lot of scoring because I got the under in this. Yeah, I think that that's um, I think I'm willing to go at some touchdown props here. I'm not targeting the total at all. But I think to me, the reason I'm willing to go at some touchdown props, despite it being a 
bad game and generally not being a touchdown friendly environment is that both these teams do operate in pretty fast fashion at least um, i believe the cowboys are first in pace and the giants are 10th according to brandon gadula's numbers and number fire yeah it's uh first for the Gi- uh, first for the cowboys 10th for the giants so that'll help at least nullify a bit of the bad environment overall so that's why i'm okay going to test some touchdown props despite the fact that we should expect longer numbers uh in these types of situations so i do like uh, the Shepard one, I think part of the reason I like the Hudson one is because if you compare him to Bellinger, who again, he ran more routes than last week, Bellinger is five to one for any time touchdown, uh, whereas Hudson is 11 to one. I think that gap right. is far too large. So Absolutely. I will take Hudson there. Any other bets you want to mention uh, that stand out to you here, Ryan? Or are we all good? Yeah, I think I think we're all good. I just wanted to bring up just let's just look interestingly here. Um, you know, just because of the way that Daniel Dimes likes to play, I'm I'm going to get dicey too. I think I'm going to put like a quarter unit on the Dallas defense to score a touchdown. Uh, this is a defense that we know has been aggressive time and time again. Uh, they get to him, you know, we're talking about a sack fumble. Maybe there's a return. Uh, the secondary, we know they like to ball hawk and take chances. So maybe they take a pick six to the house. It's a, it's 11 to one. So yeah. you'll like it a little bit more favorable than that. It is interesting that the Giants have the same number as the Cowboys. I think there's a lot more opportunities for Dallas to score than than the Giants defense to score. Uh, but I, I would be interested in in putting that prop on, on solo um, or in a long shot uh, parlay if it convinces me. I think that that is interesting. So. And it, you mentioned the key thing there. It's the the Cowboys aggressiveness and the way Daniel Jones plays. Like bad pocket presence in a game where you're facing Micah Parsons. I know he's like he's sick, but he got in limited practice on Saturday. I get messed up with the days uh, when it's on uh, Monday, but he did get a limited practice on Friday. So he should be good to go or Saturday. He should be good to go. That's not a guy you want to have bad pocket presence against. So. Right. I think eleven to one is is an interesting number there for sure. So even though it's a it's a bad game overall, still some pretty fun props available oh, yeah. on the board for tonight. That is all that we have here for today on covering the spread. Back again tomorrow to take uh, I'll take my first look at NFL Week Number Four. We'll also have Pitching Ninja on to talk some strikeout props. That will be a whole lot of fun. But Ryan, I got to say thank you to you first uh, for swinging by and breaking down. Your thoughts on Monday night football. Good luck to you tonight. We'll talk to you once again later on this week. Good luck to you as well, too, Jim. We'll we'll keep an eye on Tanner Hudson for you. Um, But uh, yeah, it's always fun talking shop with you and appreciate everybody tuning in to covering the spread yet again as we're having fun to start the season here. Yeah, I'm going to have my next gen stats module open whenever Tanner Hudson's on the field. We're rooting for Giants touchdowns, baby. That's that's I want to see the special teams unit coming on the field next because that's an indicator that they scored. So Let's go Tanner Hudson, baby. That is all that we have here for today. Check out Ryan on Twitter at Ryan Alexander underscore W. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonis. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. Big thank you to everyone for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your bets for tonight. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow. Take a quick look at NFL week number four. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. <laughs>